Good morning. Good morning. That's great. You all are ready for the Sunday school hour, are you? <clears throat> we are studying, again, one of the emotions uh, as Lee started the study last Sunday. Uh, we know that we have different emotions that we deal with. Shaking off fear is the emotion for today. What is something that you like or uh, don't like admitting that you're afraid of? Is it watching a horror movie or some people, they enjoy watching a horror movie and then they become very tense, you know, trying to determine what the outcome is going to be uh, because they know there's a lot of suspense in watching movies of that type. One of my fears is snakes. I don't like snakes. I don't care if it's a green or black or whatever color it is. Um, I have a fear of those uh, creatures. However, I know that God created all of them for a purpose, though. And, you know, fear can be healthy. That was pointed out uh, last week. Our emotions can be healthy, but if we let our emotions run wild, then it can keep us from uh, sometimes avoiding dangerous situations, though the Bible calls us to fear God, but that means to have reverence for him uh, indeed, and we have a rich of reverence Rental, all of him. And I read this week um, in a devotion that this minister and his wife were out in Denver, Colorado, and they decided that they would take a drive through the area. And little did they know or pay attention to the weather forecast, and it started snowing, and it became a whiteout and they could not see where they were going. And then they noticed some tail lights or other lights coming, or what appeared to be an ambulance in front of them. So they followed that ambulance all the way back into Denver and to their way home. And God provided safety for them. And they didn't have to fear anymore because they were able to uh, follow uh, that. And you know, fear can paralyze us and keep us from moving forward or living a life that God calls us to be. And we know that the psalmist reminds us that waiting in fear of God means we can trust him with all of our fears, regardless of what it may be. And we do not know who the writer of Psalms 91. That is where our study is coming from today. But he expressed his trust in the Lord. And we're not certain of the historical setting at that particular time when Psalms 91 was uh, written. And it was written as a poem. And this is one of my favorite Psalms, Psalms 91, uh, indeed. And it could be the setting of the Israelites' army uh, going into battle when facing dangers. And believers can find, we know that we can find security in God's character, in his protection, in his love. And we know that the psalmist had names for the different characters uh, in this particular psalm. And the first verses that we read, Psalms 1 through 6, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Well, we've heard different names of, for God. The first one was the Most High, and we know that the Most High, he is one who is above all. And we know also that he is all-powerful. We have a mighty God, too, don't we? He's omnipotent, uh, never changing. He does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then the almighty power of God, we know that there's nothing too big for him. And there's uh, nothing that's beyond his uh, handling of fear or anything else. We know that he has the ability to overcome all fears. And then it mentioned in this scripture, the Lord. Now, this is the name God revealed himself to Moses. Uh, and usually, we know that the children of Israel, they translated I am, uh, for meaning the Lord. And also we know that uh, this was established with the children of Israel with the covenant that they made with the Lord. And they had a wonderful relationship with God. And the psalmist also, he acknowledged the greatness and power of God as the creator. Uh, and that was the fourth name uh, that he said, my God. And we know that indeed that that is in uh, reference uh, to him. And uh, we know, too, that we are so, so thankful uh, for him, for the divine protection that he gives us. And indeed, we are so thankful that the psalmist continued to emphasize to us to have trust in the Lord uh, with all things. And as I mentioned earlier, the psalmist acknowledged the greatness and power of God as the creator. And by using that fourth name, he said, my God, he is sufficient indeed to take care of any uh, thing that we deal with uh, indeed every day. We know that we have situations that come up that we may have some fear about, but we we trust in God. He will see us through. That was just like someone called me yesterday and said, do you have plans for dinner? And I said, no. They said, okay, we, we will be over. And then later I got a call. They said, you know, I believe we'll cancel. There's so many people that we know that have had fear in their life. And I think it might just be wise if we stay here. I said, well, you know, that's strange. Our lesson tomorrow in Sunday school is on fear. They said, that's exactly right. We trust in the Lord, and we don't fear anything. We just turn everything over to him. So we know that the psalmist declared, he is my God in whom I will trust. We know that trusting in God, that we have a sure confidence uh, in his love and in his protection for us. And it reflects in how we live and respond in the days of fearful situations. Uh, a consistent walk of trust is really vital, vital to all of us. And, you know, fear, some of the fearful situations come without warning. And, for example, we know that a bird doesn't knowingly uh, walk into a trap that has been set for him or her. Uh, the trap is set there for a point. It's to get that bird, though. And with us, as far as having fearful situations, it could be a doctor's diagnosis, or we could have a fall or auto accident. You know, any of these situations, they could paralyze. Uh, uh, you know, these situations can paralyzed fear for us, but if we keep our eyes on the Lord in trust, he will keep us from falling into to a trap 
of being fearful. Just trusting in him. You know, it reminds us of the song, Trust and Obey, uh, does it not? And we, when we trust God, we stay close to him, and he will cover you. He'll cover Carolyn with his feathers, just as a bird it mentioned, you know, or a chicken in this uh, scripture, so to speak, covers their own with their feathers. Well, God covers us with his feathers, too. We, he is a gentle, caring God who's a mighty warrior. And he defends us. Uh, nothing we know surprises God. I've heard that mentioned several times since the first of the year, that God was not surprised when COVID-19 became fearful for each and every one of us. God knows everything, does he not? And we need to keep trusting him. You know, the year 2020 has indeed been full of a lot of surprises other than COVID-19 for each and every one of us. And he protects us from the shadowy assailants that we can't see. We simply need to trust him. Regardless of what we face, he defends us, and he is with us every moment of every day. Uh, and we know that even in the Psalms that David echoed trust, trust that he had in God. And we are so thankful for the fact that we do trust in God. Uh, two. And then we go to verses 9 through 13. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all the ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. We can trust in God uh, completely as we dwell, or he dwells in us. And he told the people in this scripture that no harm will come to you. No plague uh, will come near you or near your tent. God sent the uh, Israelites uh, free from slavery in Egypt, and they had had plague after plague, uh, indeed, in the fields there in Egypt. But he sent them uh, hail. But the only place that that hail did not fall or land was in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were. And it was just amazing, indeed, what God can do. And remember the tenth and final plague was to destroy all the firstborn uh, male, and death uh, was going to visit every home. Well, in Egypt, uh, it, we know as we found in God's word that it did accept the homes where they had the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Those were the only homes that were not gone into to see about the killing, so to speak, of the male. And they visit, uh, death visited all of these other homes. And the others, we know, they placed their faith and trust in God. Uh, to see them through, and by placing that blood of the lambs uh, on the doorpost, he passed over those homes. God still protects us today. He has protected us. He continues to protect us day by day. And he, will, he mentioned in this scripture that he will give the angels charge over every believer um, because he's in charge of all people. And many, many people today 
uh, they trust, they take this scripture literally, and they say, we know that it is the biblical reference to angels. And in Luke, we know the reference of the angels uh, appearing to the shepherds, the wise men, and everyone uh, about the fourth coming and the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, you know, um, but even in Matthew 18 and Hebrew 1, 4, these do not make reference uh, to each of us having a guardian angel, nor do they refer to how they serve. We have said many times when the situation that we are dealing with or have dealt with, that a guardian angel was watching over us. And we believe and we know that God has been with us and is with us in every situation, but he has not provided a Pacific angel to watch over us. The troubling uh, questionnaire as far as theologians is that a lot of emphasis or more emphasis is placed on angels and not on God as the creator. People find comfort, though, in believing that they have their own uh, guardian angel. God provided for each and every believer the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us day by day in all situ situations, God's Holy Spirit. And we know indeed that Jesus and the Holy Spirit is superior to any angel. He is the one that we place our trust in for protection. And the writer of the lesson doesn't dismiss, though, uh, the fact that God uses his angels um, because of the angelic messengers uh, that they announced the birth of Jesus Christ. And we know, too, that anything that uh, the angels might do on our behalf is never done to draw attention to themselves, meaning the angels. Whatever they do, it is to glorify Christ. And we have to depend on that and depend on the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us and that whatever we do, whatever we say, it should be to glorify Christ. Uh, we are to trust and worship the one that the angels worship. God is the one who protects us. And in Matthew 4, 5 through 6, we know that the, the Satan used that passage when he tempted Jesus uh, on the cross. And he wanted uh, Jesus to let, ask God to intervene and to bring him down from that cross. But we know indeed that God was watching over Jesus as he suffered, as he bled and died for us, that we might have life eternal as believers in Christ. And God's protection indeed, it is grounded in our faithfulness, it's grounded in our obedience to him. And we are so thankful that we have Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And our next scripture is Psalms 14 through 16. Because he has his heart set on me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor. I will satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. He has his heart on me. He has his heart on you. And the one whose heart is undivided looks to God and no one else. We know that the Lord would deliver and cause the devoted servant to escape. But he knows my name. He knows your name. He knows every hair that we have on our head. He knows our thoughts. He knows everything about us. He's a knowing God. And this way, you know, it is more than just being aware of God's name. 
It's knowing him by our acceptance and our experience and God as our Savior and forgiving us of our sins and accepting and believing and trusting in him. Having a relationship with him is so important, is it not? And we pray daily. We study God's word daily. And that indeed helps us to have a closer relationship with him in having fellowship with each other uh, together. We learn to grow and to know God more. Hearing others give their testimony and speak of God is the most important thing. And having that relationship means to be attached or to love with a deep inward love in a positive sense. So God promises us that those who trust in him as we read in verses 14 through 16, he said, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor. I will satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. Now let us remember to focus on God, who is our defender. And no matter what we face, no matter, Carolyn, what you face, no matter uh, anyone else here, what, what you face or I face, God is our defender. Uh, we know indeed that he loves each and every one. So as we remember to focus on God, who is our defender, no matter what we face, we know that we should be trusting in him instead of our own selves to make decisions or whatever we do. The power of goodness is our protector in fear. Psalms 91, we must not uh, interpret it in the light of the whole message of the scripture. We must not view this poem as a guarantee that God's people will never suffer adversity. And because in reality, they do, and we do. And we also know the Lord uses suffering to mature us spiritually. And God is with his children, as we've mentioned, every moment of every day. Even in the most uh, distressing experiences, it reminds us that we can shake off fear because we are secure in his care. God loves you. God loves me. Indeed, we have a wonderful God, do we not, who loves us. And all he asks is for us to trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. God, as we come to the close of this study today, we thank you, Heavenly Father. We know that you indeed are a caring God. You love us, and you tell us to put our faith and trust in you, no matter what the situation may be, that we will not have that fear. We just turn everything over to you. God, many times we go come to you in prayer. We say, Jesus, it's me again that... I've got this situation coming up. However, we know, God, that you know what we face day by day, moment by moment. And you release all fear that we have in our uh, thinking, in our heart, we, and in our mind, uh, because you are our God. You are our protector. You are the one that we need to trust in. We know that no matter what the situation may be, you will calm our fears. And we are so thankful. We love you and thank you, Heavenly Father. Forgive us for any situation that we try to handle ourselves. And we pray, God, that we will just turn everything over to you, lay it at the foot of the cross. We know we have seen so many situations and you have performed so many miracles in the lives of people that we love in the last few months. And this year, 
though we have mentioned that it has been a difficult year for us, Heavenly Father. It's been a difficult year for all, and we just need to not fear but to trust in you for all situations. We pray that we'll live a happy, joyful life with you if we only let go of these fears and just let you take care of it. It's our prayer in your name. Amen.